Open your Bibles with me to the book of Romans at chapter number 16. Romans at chapter 16. And I want to read verses 5 through verse 16 and then verses 21 through verse 23. Romans chapter 16, commencing in verse number 5. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epatnitus, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbane, our helper in Christ, and Stachys, my beloved. Salute Epilus, approved in Christ. Salute them which are of Aristobulus' household. Salute Herodian, my kinsmen. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. Salute Trephina and Trephosa, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with them. Salute Philodulus and Julia, Nereseus and his sister, and Olympus and all the saints which are with them. Salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Verse 21, Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my kinsmen, salute you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Gaius, mine host, and of the whole church, salute if you, Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, salute if you, and Quartus, a brother. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. That's about 35 names that to you mean absolutely nothing. But in the sight of God, these no-named people who never get the spotlight, who, who never get to be out front, who never get their names called, this sermon this morning is for the people who park our cars for the people who clean the restrooms, for the people who do stuff that never get any attention and their name is never on the program, they never get to lead a song, they're never out in front of the people, but we could not do what we do if it were not for those people whose names are never called who make a difference in all of our lives. You will date yourself this morning if you help me with this sermon. There was a singing group in the 1970s called the Fifth Dimension. See how quiet some of y'all trying to act like you don't know the Fifth Dimension. But the Fifth Dimension had a couple that, that came out of that group, uh, Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis. Uh, they had a number one hit single in 1977, you don't have to be a star, baby, to be in my show. Well, I'm going to leave the baby part off this morning, and I want to dance with this tune. You don't have to be a star to be in my show. Paul is trying to get that over to us this morning. God is trying to get over to us this morning. You don't have to be a star. You don't have to stick out. You don't have to be in the front. God can use you in the background. You, you don't have to be a star. You don't have to be the featured act. Just be supporting cast. 
You ever notice when people go to the movies, nobody ever stays to watch the credits. And at the Oscars, there are awards for best actress and best actor, for best film and best director, but nobody ever pays attention to the grip boy, uh, to the best boy, to the associate director. Nobody ever mentions or reads the name of the people who go get food for the actors or the chauffeurs or the people who make sure that the props are set up. As a matter of fact, there's a separate award ceremony for, for the cost, costume design and, and for set design, but, but the major actors and actresses are always featured, but nobody ever reads the credits at the end of the movie. Because all we're concerned about is the star of the show. But this morning, God is not particularly interested in stars, but in supporting cast. Because were it not for the people in the background, were it not for people in your lives whose names will never be called, but you would not be the man or the woman that you are had it not been for some unnamed person who made a difference in your life. Uh, Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis said, you can come as you are with just your heart and I'll take you in though you're, though you're rejected and hurt. To me, you're worth what you have within. Uh, I don't need no superstar because I'll accept you as you are. You won't be denied because I'm satisfied with the love that you can inspire. You don't have to be a star, they say, to be in my show. As Paul comes to the end of the book of Romans, which is the Magna Carta of the New Testament, he concludes with a list of names. In fact, there are 35 names mentioned in these verses. And many people might read these names and conclude that there is nothing of value contained here. But the truth, brothers and sisters, is far different. What we have here is the great apostle making an effort to thank those who had made an impact on his life and on his ministry. What a blessing when we remember those who have made a difference in our lives. Someone in this congregation this morning has meant much in your spiritual growth. Some Sunday school teacher, some preacher, some friend, some mother, some grandmother, some aunt, some cousin, some uncle, some brother in your Sunday school class has taken the time out of his or her life to make a difference by a word spoken or a prayer prayed or a word of encouragement or a smile just when you needed it. Maybe it was your mother or your father who raised you right and you're in the church this morning because somebody told you about Jesus. I know this is a little out of the ordinary. I know this is unorthodox and this is not something that we usually do. But there's somebody you need to thank this morning. There's somebody's hand you need to shake and look in their eyes and tell them thank you for leading me to Jesus Christ. Thank you for a word of encouragement. Get up right now and find who that person is. That man, that woman. It'll take us two or three minutes to do this. But there's some Sunday school teacher. There's some mother here. Don't be embarrassed to tell somebody thank you. Somebody helped you. Somebody encouraged you. Somebody lifted you in a time when you needed it the most. You may be sitting next to them. They might be across the room. But take the time right now to get up and go meet them where they are and tell them, thank you for being my encouragement. Thank you for loving me when I didn't know how to love myself. Thank you for throwing your arms around me when the world said I wasn't going to make it. Thank you for being my mother when my mother went to sleep to be with the Lord. Thank you for being my father when I didn't know which way to turn. Thank you for holding my hand. Thank you for praying for me. 
Thank you for coming to visit me when I was sick. Thank you for being what I needed when I didn't even know I needed it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, do it now, do it now. You, don't, don't wait till they die. Don't wait till their funeral. Do it now while you got a chance, while the blood is running warm in your veins. Now that didn't take long, did it? Don't wait till the funeral to tell them thank you. Don't wait until they die to say good things about them. Give them their flowers while they can hear it. You ought to be throwing money down on this pulpit right now. You ought to be rushing this stage right now telling me, thank you, Reverend, for the sermons you preached. Thank you for sowing into my life. God has sent somebody your way to make a difference in your life and you could not be who you are without that person making you their hero. Tell somebody, thank you. What Paul is doing is summed up in verse number 15. He sends greetings to the saints that are with him. That word saint ought to be investigated this morning. You don't have to be long dead to be a saint. You don't have to wait for the Roman church to beatify you in order for you to be a saint. A saint is not dead. A saint does not mean you see no evil, you hear no evil, you speak no evil. You are a saint in Christ Jesus if you've been forgiven. If you've been saved from your sins and the Lord has written your name in the Lamb's book of life, you don't have to wait to become a saint. You are a saint before you die. Let's take some time to look through this list of names and, and we will discover that, brothers and sisters, then as now, hear me, behind every name, there's a story. Behind every name of every person in here, every person here with a name has a story. Every believer is great in the kingdom of God. There is nobody else in the family of God like you. This message this morning is, is for the nameless people who never get a chance to take a bow. We don't, we don't ever call the names of people who clean the restrooms. Uh, we just go in there and the restroom is clean. Uh, we don't ever call the names of the people who make sure nobody breaks into our cars outside. Uh, we never call those people's names. We never, we never go in the back uh, at the restaurant and thank the cook for preparing the meal. We give a tip to the waiter and the server, but it's the, it's the people in the back who prepare the food. Then somebody had to wash the dishes that they put the food on. And we tip the people who bring us the food, but the people who are behind the scenes are the ones who are doing the work. And there are many people at Lily Grove behind the scenes making this stuff work, and we never get a chance to tell them thank you. The people who make the programs for us, the people who work the cameras, the people who are on the instruments, the people who are vacuuming the floor. This message is for people who, whose names are never called. Don't get, don't get discouraged if you never get any attention on this side. Because you're not looking for approval on this side. You're not looking for a pat on the back on this side. You're looking to hear God say, servant, 
Well done. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. I want you to see first, brothers and sisters, that these people were definite saints. Uh, to us, uh, this is just a list of names. But to Paul, it's a list of friends. What is striking is that saints are real people. You, you're not sitting next to Mother Teresa this morning. You're not sitting next to Pope John Paul II. You're sitting next to a real, live, breathing person of flesh and blood who are saints even though they messed up. Hear me, brothers and sisters. I want you to get this. We are saints, but there's still something crooked in us. We are saints, but there's still something bent in us. We are children of God, but we are all fellow strugglers. That's why everybody here needs everybody else. Um, yeah, me. Um, Paul is writing to them because there's a warm spot in his heart for them. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14 says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Yes. They are the object of his special conversation. And the special conversation that we believers have is our time in prayer. Romans chapter 1 verse 9, Paul says, Without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. Let me ask you, Lily Grove, do you take advantage of the opportunity afforded you by the Lord to pray for one another? Not just pray for me as pastor, but pray for one another on a daily basis by calling somebody by name. Because when you begin to pray for people, those people become special to you. Uh, we enter into their lives. We enter into their burdens. We develop a heart for them because it's impossible to dislike somebody you're praying for. It's hard to be hateful towards people that you're praying for. It's hard to be mean to somebody that you're praying for. It's hard for you to hate somebody and pray for them at the same time. And the person you are praying for may never change, but the prayer will change you. We used to sing it when I was a boy. Lord, you don't have to move the mountain. Just give me the strength to climb. Lord, don't take away my Stumbling blocks just, just lead me all around. God, prayer may not ever change the individual that you're praying for, but it'll give you peace in how you deal with that person. He, he has a special conversation about them, but then Paul has a special concern for them. In 2 Corinthians at chapter number 11, verse 28, Paul speaks of the care of the churches. He has a whole lot of other stuff going on. He has a whole lot of preaching to do and a whole lot of missions to do, but, but with all of that stuff piled on him, he still cares for the churches. The word care means to be pulled apart. It means to experience anxiety because you are so desirous of the person you are praying for to make it. When we see a believer struggling, it should move us with a heart for them. Listen to me, Lily Grove. There are, there are, there are three ways to look at this situation. Uh, you can look at it with apathy. You can look at it with sympathy. Or you can look at it with empathy. Apathy says you in that ditch and you got yourself in there. That's your business. Get out the best way you can. 
you never should have been in there in the first place. You saw that ditch, you must want to be in it. So since you're in it, you got to sleep in the bed you made for yourself. A hard head. Yeah, you know the rest of that. That's what apathy says. But sympathy says, I see you in that ditch. It must have hurt when you fell down in that ditch. I sure feel sorry for you. I hope things turn around in your favor. I sure hope you get out of that ditch. I'd hate to come back here tomorrow and see you lying in that same ditch you got yourself in. I know you're in a lot of pain, but I got to work. I know you must be hurting, but I got some things I got to do for myself. I'm hurting myself, and if I stop and help you, I'm going to stop and slow down doing what I need to do. So I'm praying for you, and I hope you get out. But empathy says, I fell in a ditch one day myself. I know how it feels to be in the ditch. And so I'm going to get in there with you and help you to get out of there. Aren't you glad one Friday on a hill called Calvary that Jesus was not apathetic or sympathetic, but he was empathetic in that he died for us to get us out of the ditch we got ourselves in. I wish I had some friends here that when I get in trouble you don't put me on Facebook and, and, and talk about did you hear what happened with Reverend Anderson. I, w I wish I had some friends who, who didn't say poor Rev he's in trouble. I'm praying for him. I hope things work out for him. No, I need some friends who can come to my house and say I know you messed up. But I messed up one day myself. And I'm going to stay with you till you get yourself together. That's what a real friend does. A real friend loves you enough to tell you, quit acting a fool. You better stop doing what you're doing. You're going to mess yourself up more than you already. I'm going to cuss you out until you get yourself together. That's what a real friend will do for you. And thank God, brothers and sisters, that if you got four or five real good friends, you are the best person in this world to shout right now because if you live in this world with some folk who love you and get in your mess with you, you are blessed. Yeah. They were definite saints. But I want you to see something else in the text. These are diverse saints. As we read these verses, they are men and women. Jews and Romans. Households and churches. Wealthy and poor. It is clear from the reading of the text that this is a diverse group of people. I want you to look with me in the text. Look with me uh, in, in, in um, verse 9. Uh, Urbane and Stachys. Oh, I, 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 know, I, I know the definition of all of these names, but I don't have time to go through that. I might get up through it at 11 o'clock because they don't care how long I preach at 11 o'clock. Uh, but, but in verse number 9, uh, Urbane and Stachys. Urbane is a city dweller. That's what the name Urbane means. We even use that word now for somebody who is urbane, or who is sophisticated and well-groomed. They are said to be urbane and, and cultured. Urbane is a city dweller, but Stachys is a hayseed. He's country. He farms. He's, he's got a, a straw in his mouth. Uh, he, he has overalls on. But he and Urbane sit on the same pew. Somebody ought to help me preach it. One is a city dweller. One is country. But they sit on the same pew because both of them have the same need. 
And there are some Urbanes and some Stockuses in here this morning who need to recognize that no matter how much money you have or how less money you have, we got the same need. We need mercy. We need grace. We need somebody to look beyond our faults and see our need. Look in verse number 23. Gaius, my host, and of the whole church, saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you, and Quartus, a brother. Erastus is a city official. Quartus is a slave. But both of them go to church. Because the mayor needs God. The governor needs God. President sure needs God. Slave and free. There's no difference between the Jew or the Greek, between the bond or the free. The same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon his name. There are as many different people in this church different personalities, diverse groups of people, diverse in their humanity. Does it ever occur to you or did it ever occur to you that the Lord never makes a duplicate? Everybody here is an original. Everybody is an original. Even if you are an identical twin, you are not a duplicate. God loves you so much that he made you and broke the mold. Nobody will ever, 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 ever be like you. Nobody will ever take your place. Nobody can ever do what God let you be born to do. And if you don't do it, it will never get done. Because you are the best you God ever made. Nobody can beat you being you. You are not a carbon copy. You don't have to think like nobody thinks. You don't have to sound like, sing like, walk like, dress like. God made you who you are. And in your individuality, there is nobody that will ever be like you. God does not make duplicates. Everybody here is an original. There were Jews and Romans, Greeks and Persians, which says to us that everybody here is not on the same educational level. Everybody's not on the same economic level. Everybody does not like the same kind of food. Everybody does not live in the same neighborhood. Everybody does not drive the same kind of car. Everybody does not style their hair alike. Everybody does not wear the same kind of makeup. Everybody does not like the same brand of shoes. But all of us are here for one reason and one reason only. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, I don't care where you went to college, you need a savior. I don't care how much money you make on your job, without Jesus, you're going to hell. I don't care how pretty you are when you make your face up, you just a made up devil without Jesus Christ. Is there anybody here? Know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, that's why I come to church, because I need to give God the glory. Thank God for the Father's house. Thank God for the Father's house. Thank God for the Father's house. Let Paris keep the Eiffel Tower. I thank God for the Father's house. Let Chicago keep the Sears Tower. I thank God for the Father's house. 
New York can have Madison Square Garden. I thank God for the Father's house. Washington, D.C. can keep the White House and the fool that's in it. But I thank God that in my Father's house, have I got a witness here? I need somebody here who's glad to be in the Father's house. You're glad to be in the Father's family. No matter where you come from, we all in the same boat right now. They were definite. They were diverse. But finally, they were dedicated. Every last name means something. Every last name had something to do with Paul's spiritual maturation. Every name contributed to who Paul became. Paul wrote the Bible, half of the New Testament, and neither of them had a hand in the writing. But we never would have read it if they didn't help Paul. As a matter of fact, it was Barnabas. I wish I had a Bible reader. When Paul first joined the church, the church was scared to take him in. And it was Barnabas who went to sit with him in the back of the church and talk with him and came back and told the church, let's not be scared to take him in. He's no longer a persecutor. He's a prophet. He's no longer a student of Gamaliel. He's a servant of the Lord. And I wish I had some Barnabases in here this morning. Some encouragers in here this morning. You don't have to sing to clap for the one singing. You don't have to preach to say amen to the one preaching. You don't have to be a star, baby. To be on God's show. I, I want to say this in her presence. I want to say this while she can hear it. For years now, Kathy Allen has been president of the ushers here at Lily Grove. And um, we made a change and put somebody else in leadership over the ushers. And Kathy still gets on the floor to usher. Here's the point I want to make. It's a good sign that you never should have been over it if you can't support it when you're no longer over it. I wish I had one or two more witnesses here. If, 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 if you got to lead in order for you to be a part of the organization, God don't need you. God needs somebody that even when your name is not called, you just show up on Sunday morning because you're not doing it for applause. You're not doing it for approval. When it's all over, serve it. Well done. He ain't going to call me doctor. He ain't going to call me reverend. He ain't going to call me bishop. He's not going to call me pastor. Servant. Well done. Here are a group of people who, who are just hanging in there. They're not getting any applause. They're just, they're just hanging in there. Many of them, I'm sure, are having a hard time, but they are allowing the Lord to use them in his service. Now, brothers and sisters, you hear me. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody this morning. You can't do everything, but that shouldn't stop you from doing something. You can't do everything, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything. See how quiet you got right there? Because you're waiting for a position to come open. Why don't you just work while it's day? 
Because the night is coming when no man can work. I wish I had a witness here. You're waiting for somebody to call your name. But if when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior has come, be not dismayed if men don't believe you. He'll understand and say, well done. There are some people in this congregation you have never heard their voice and you think that because they don't say anything that they are not anything. But some of the strongest Christians in this church never make any noise. They just do what it is that God has assigned them to do and never take any credit. We could get twice as much done if we quit worrying about who got the credit. Listen. This, this, is, this, this is the shout. This, this, is, this, this is the shout. You will never learn to be a blessing until you learn how to bleed. You will never bless anybody until you learn how to bleed. What happens when saints bleed? First John chapter 3 verse 16. We so used to John, the gospel of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's, that's not the John 3.16 I want to talk about right now. I want to talk about 1 John 3.16. 1 John 3.16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for one another. You will never be a blessing until you learn how to bleed. You will never bless anybody till you've been hurt yourself. Until you had to cry. You've been down to your last dime. You have been talked about. You have been misunderstood. You will never understand how to bless people until you've been bruised. You know why we shout so much at the name of Jesus? Because he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray and God has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And because he bled on the cross, he can bless at Lily Grove. Because you can't bless until you bleed. And many of us don't want to be what God wants us to be because it's too inconvenient. We want grace when we got time for it. We want to work when we got time for it. But we ain't going to let none of this church stuff get in front of our sorority meeting. We're not going to let any of this stuff get in front of our civic responsibilities or, or the stuff we want to do that's away from church. We will put any and everything ahead of God. And parents, there's a word for you in here this morning that when your children are in all of this stuff in school and in the, in the community, and that's wonderful, they ought to have culture, they ought to be excited about sports and all of that. But without Christ, you've got an athletic demon. Without Christ, that girl is a cultured fool. You need Jesus Christ. Start your children on Christ and let them work down to basketball. 
Let them work down to football. Because when all that stuff is passed away, they're going to need a savior. You don't have to be a star, baby, to be in my show. That's what God is saying to us this morning. You don't, you don't have to shine and be out front. Just make yourself available. Just show up. That's all you got to do. You, you, you might be saying, Reverend, I don't have a whole lot to give. That's all right. Little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. That, that little boy out in the desert place didn't have much to give. He had two fish and five little barley loaves, but they gave it to Jesus, and he's lifted it up to his father, and he fed 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children, because that boy was willing to give up his little bit. I'm through. But Dr. Martin King used to quote a poem written by Douglas Malick. If you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley, but be the best little scrub by the side of the rill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. We can't all be captains. We've got to be crew. There's something for all of us here. There's big work to do and there's lesser to do and the best work is what for you is near. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. It isn't by size that you win or fail. Be the best at whatever you are. God made you in his image and in his likeness. And God has assigned a work for you to do that nobody can do but you because God made you an original. When he made you, he broke the mold so that nobody born since will ever be exactly like you. And then God created you to bleed so that when you bleed, you can bless. You don't have to take my word for that. One dark Friday on Calvary's cross, Jesus paid it all. He bled. He died. He gave his life as a ransom. And we are in this church this morning because somebody bled for us. Alas, and did my Savior bleed? And did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? Was it for crimes that I had done? He hung upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now, right now, 10 minutes to nine, right now, I am happy all the day. Your name may never be called. They may never know who you are. But if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, it does not matter. They don't know your name in Houston when the roll is called up yonder. Uh, I'm really through now. You know, I can't say I'm through except by three or four times. I'm, I'm really through now. I'm, I'm, no, for real, I'm through this time. Um, your name is important to God. 
Your name is so important to God that God did not number you. He named you. And when it's all over, he will give you hidden manna, a white stone, and a new name. And your name will be a name that nobody else has because your name will be what your work was. Somebody ought to help me close here. I'm glad he did not number us. He named us. Uh, AT&T does not know my name. They know 713-747-7569. My phone number. My mail carrier don't care nothing about me. They know 7046 Tier Wester, Houston, Texas, 77021, my zip code number. Social security folk don't care nothing about me. They know 7344002269, my social security number. That's why when sinners die, their number is up. But when saints die, their name is called. When it's all over, he's not going to call me by my number. He's going to call me by my name. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. Because I'll be somewhere listening, not for my number, but for my name. 